I just can't get them out. Sometimes I get them out, they don't make any sense because they're all jumbled up. A lot, a lot of times, or usually when I come across a passage that I want to share, it's that passage itself that speaks directly to me in the message that's right here in that passage. But sometimes, like today's the case, every verse I read brought a different scripture to my life. So we're going to jump around our Bible a lot today. And it may sound like I'm a little bit scattered for it.
about the snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, and the opportunity to stand here in your house and worship you, Lord, and to praise you. Father, we thank you for allowing us to share your word and your message. We ask that you be with us in this service today, that you will accomplish your purpose, not only here, but in our lives as we leave here today. Father, guide us according to your will. Use us according to your plan, and grant us your mercy. So who, who is this David, and what do we know about him? And what does this have to do with revival? We know David as the second human king of Israel. And I say human king because we know that Israel was set apart. They were supposed to be a servant of God, and God was to be their king and their leader. But the people of Israel rejected God, and asked Samuel, the prophet, to give us a king so we can be like the other nations around us. The Israelites turned their back on God and wanted to be more like the other people. So Saul was the first king, and David him. He was the second human king. David was the son of Jesse. He was descended of Ruth and an ancestor of Jesus Christ. God said of David through Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 13 when Samuel was talking to Saul, he told Saul so Saul had turned his back on God and Samuel said, the Lord had sought him a man after his own heart and the Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people. So what else do we know about David? We know that he killed Goliath. He wrote many of the Psalms. It's in our Bible today. Does that mean that David was a perfect person? No. We know that he sinned against God. He took the census of the people when he wasn't supposed to. He also committed adultery. And he even had someone killed. So we ask ourselves, how can this be a man that is after God's own heart? Because David has sinned in his life. We all have sinned in our life. But David, when he sinned, he recognized his sin when it was brought to his attention. He didn't deny it. He didn't try to hide it. He confessed it to God and re he repented of it. He did not continue in his sin. And this is what revival is about for a Christian. If we need to be revived, or to restore our relationship with God. First, we need to confess our sin and failures to Him. We ask Him to restore us to a new relationship with Him so that we can serve Him and serve Him better. Our first verse in chapter 18 says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Every time I read these words, or if I hear another person say, I love the Lord, or I love God, or I love Jesus, the first thing that comes to my mind is John chapter 14. You know, a lot of times this is not about what I'm reading, and it's not about the other person's attitude. It's about me being under conviction. Perhaps God is trying to speak directly to me and to 
tell me, pay attention to what God is saying. John 14, 15, Jesus said, If ye love me, obey my commandments. That's hard to do. But wait a minute. Is God telling me specifically that I need to do a better job of keeping his commandments? And to be honest, yes, he is. Because I'm not perfect. And I fall short every day of what our Savior expects of me and all of his children. So what are these commandments that I need to be keeping in my life? When Jesus was asked what was the greatest commandment, he had an answer. In Mark 12, 30 and 31, he said, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And there is none other commandment greater than these. <coughs> Do we today truly love the Lord? Do our actions and words show our love for the Lord? Are we acting out what we say we do? Or are we just playing lip service to what we think a good Christian should do? In John 13, 34, Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Jesus just stepped up this command on love another notch. You know, we can love our neighbor as we love ourselves when it's convenient for us. It wasn't convenient for Jesus to leave heaven and come to earth. It wasn't convenient take all of our sins upon himself and die on the cross with you. He's called each one of us to love one another at that level as he loved us. And how does he love us? God loves us so much that he sent his son, his one and only son, to die on the cross. Jesus loves us so much that he willingly gave his life on that cross. At any time, he could have said no and just walked away. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. We call this one the Great Commission. But most, if not all of us, we treat it like the Great Suggestion. It's not a suggestion. Jesus told us to do it. It is a commandment. And I fall short on this one every day. We all do, I believe. Perhaps it is because we are shy or afraid to talk to people. This is not my comfort zone up here. I'd much rather be back there on that sound board where nobody can see. Sometimes, you know, God gets a hold of us. You have to do what He wants you to do. Maybe it's because we also fall short on the first and the greatest commandment. But even though know, we say we love God, we're not willing to show that love or express it in our words, in our actions, or that we don't love the Lord with our entire being. I've heard it said and even been told by more than one person 
They said, what right do I have to tell somebody else what they believe is wrong? We live in a free country. We can believe whatever we want. That's true. We do live in a free country. We can believe what we want. But it's not because we live in this country that we can believe what we want. It's because God gave us the choice. He gave us the freedom so that we he gave us the freedom so So we don't have a right to tell others. We have a command, a responsibility. As a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, we have an obligation to tell others the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How will others believe if they don't hear? How will they hear if people are not sent? We've been sent. It's up to us to go and tell. It's a commandment. If we do not tell others about God's love and His saving grace through Jesus Christ, then we are condemning them to an eternity in hell. Because we have sinned against God by not sharing His love and obeying His commandments. Verse 2 says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, and my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. He's my rock, a firm foundation, a place of safety for me to stand. He's my fortress, a place of refuge where I can stand in safety. God is my strength in whom I can trust for my safety and my salvation. God is my buckler. I had to look this one up. In some translations, it says God is my shield. And even in our footnotes, it says a buckler is a shield. But it's a very specific type of shield. You know, in ancient times, in Bible times, uh, many shields, most shields, were really big and heavy, where the whole person could hide behind. And many warriors had a separate per person just to bear their shield. They would stand and fight while someone else protected them. But that person was always out away from them, between them and the enemy. And if there's more than one, you know, he'd, he'd have to move his big shield around trying to protect the fire. But a buckler is a smaller shield. It's designed to be worn on the forearm. So it's right here within arm's reach at all times. And then he even allowed the warrior who used the buckler to hold an extra weapon in their hand. We know that God fights our battles. And he protects us. But he is not out away from us. He's right here in arm's length. Always with us. Verse 6 says, In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ear. When Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, Jesus said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receive. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. What is it that we need? Ask, and it will be given. Do we need forgiveness? Ask, and it will be given. Do we need strength for the day? Ask, 
and it will be given. Do we need guidance? Do we need direction? Do we need assurance? Do we need revival? Ask, and it will be given. Most of the music I listen to is usually old songs. And back before my time, so there's a man named Squire Parsons, another man named Jim Reeves, and they both sang different versions of a song that I like. It was called, It Is No Secret. And the song says, It is no
Isaiah said in Isaiah 64, 6, that our righteousness, the best that we have to offer on our own, is counted as filthy rags. We need to thank God that our salvation is not dependent on our own abilities, our actions. Because we can't do it on our own. But we don't have to. Because of Jesus paid it all on the cross. Verse 46. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. As a child of God, if we truly want revival in our lives, we must confess our sins and failures to God and ask for His forgiveness and truly seek His will in our lives by being obedient to Him. If we love Him, we must obey. If you have never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, or just don't understand where to begin. It's not hard. It's not complicated. Sometimes people make it sound like it's harder than it is. But know this. That God loves you. And He sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to pay for your sin. Your sin debt has been paid in full. And all that remains is to accept the free gift of forgiveness that God is offering. You do not need to clean yourself up before coming to Christ. Because you can. <clears throat> if we could, then there would have been no need for Jesus to come and die on the cross. You can come as you are right now and give your life to Christ and ask for His forgiveness, and He will give it. Repentance is turning away from your past and turning to God in a new life that is waiting for you. There is no other name under heaven where we might be saved. Saved from what? Saved from ourselves and our sin and eternity. In heaven. Jesus says, Come to me, and I will give you rest. Ask, and you will receive. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for everyone that's here and for their patience in putting up with my people attempt to honor you. Father, we thank you for your saving grace that you provided through your Son on the cross of Calvary. And the love you show us. We ask that you'll speak to our hearts and draw us closer to you. Help us to live for you now and every day. You are the one true God. 